I'm here with Eat My Shorts and it's July 4th. So happy Independence Day to all my American friends. So as you know, we have increased the population in Eat My Shorts by adding worms from Peekaboo that I emptied that bedding bin and that compost was aged and used in my garden, that vermicompost. And so now Eat My Shorts is hopefully working away on the shorts material, though I see some sticking out of the soil or out of the bedding there. So that's not going to get worked on by the worms. But I'm willing to wait this out. I was hoping to be able to empty this bedding bin as well sooner rather than later in terms of being able to season, uh, age the vermicompost and get it ready for my garden this summer but it looks like it's going to take a lot longer you can see i've put corn husk in here that is still hanging around i hope you can also see that there is a lot of vermicompost here that could be sifted except it is home to a lot of worms i don't want to disturb them by pulling them all out of here and uh and you know, putting them through the sifting process. I think it's bad enough that uh, I'm forcing them to eat cotton shorts material, but you can see the worms in here. There's so many. Uh, Patrick, if you watch this video, I'm getting up there in population in this bin anyway. Um, there are more worms in this bin than I think I have in, in terms of concentration than some of my other systems. And I haven't done a, a thorough check whether they are breeding in here, whether this bin is nearing capacity. It's got about four square feet of surface area, which technically that means it can take 4,000 worms. Don't know how many worms are in here. Quite a few, quite a few. Anyway, so I've still got that corn husk uh, persisting, so I will leave it on the bottom. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to shift this bedding back over here, check the other side, see if I can see any food remnants, and if not, I will feed them up. All right, so I'm in on this other side of the bedding. Um, I don't know whether you can see, but I have quite a few crawlers who are deciding to go up the walls because they do not like what I am doing. Always being the case with this bin that when I disturb, I get a few worms going for a little bit of a walkabout. That's okay. Um, don't know if they're blues. I don't know. And, you know, I just put them back and, uh, you know, they never crawl out otherwise. It's not like I come in to this bin and in the morning and I see worms that have escaped and dried up on the floor. There is no lid on this bin, but it is very deep. I think it's about 17 inches deep. I just looked up the dimensions of this bin uh, a little while ago and I remember it in inches as being 17 and a quarter or something like that, inches deep. Um, it might even be deeper than that now that I eyeball it. This one might actually be deeper. I should measure it. Uh, so very tall walls. So yes, the worms are climbing the walls. Probably got about half a dozen. But they are not going to be able to climb all the way up and escape. I know that. They will turn around because of the light, if nothing else. All right. Well, I didn't see any sign of food. Don't know if you saw any sign of food. You might. You've got a better vantage than I do in some ways. All right. So I think I will go back i'll go back to that corn husk might as well feed on top of that and try to get try to get that um settled excuse me a moment there we go and try to get that uh, a little bit moist with the feeding and what i've got is something that i stuck in the freezer never went back and looked at it my goal was to go back and take it out and blend it and then I just took it out and it is a pile of banana peels and so 
they've been thawed, but they are intact. Basically banana peels, something I normally don't add. I normally blend them up so that they are just pulp. There's not a lot of food on banana peels. And actually there isn't even a lot of moisture in there. It's just banana peels. There will be, you know, little scraps of banana and the worms will go after them. There's no doubt, but I, I didn't want to, um, that's a bit of cardboard, not a worm <laughs> on my finger. I didn't want to leave it another day without doing something with those banana peels. And I thought, you know, I'll put them in to eat my shorts. So I'll just put a little bit of grit on those banana peels. And even though the corn husks, I assume, are a source of carbon, I will add a little bit more carbon around that. I don't think I need a lot, uh, you know, not, not that I'm trying to finish this bin um, quickly anymore, but you know, I, I, there isn't a lot of moist, excess moisture in this bin. I actually will um, dampen this down after I, um, after I push the bedding back. Oh, I do want to show you something. Do you see the worms uh, just gathering there in a little cluster on the side? That is probably a sign of being stressed. Uh, I have from time to time opened a bin and seen a cluster like that uh, all together. And if there's no food in the area and there's no other reason for worms to be doing that, uh, like they're not mating or anything, that could very well be a sign of stress. So I am going to be out of here. I'll just put the shorts material back on top of this feeding area. And this vermicompost will go back over top. I think I will sift this out sometime in the next month or so and reduce the amount of bedding. Um, you know, if I get any hint that the, the worms can um, survive with less bedding than this. Or I'll just start moving some of these worms out. So don't like the fact that I'm getting that little cluster of worms there. The, the worms that are... If I just grab a couple of these that are climbing the walls over here. Oops, there he went. You just grab that worm. Come on. There he is. Not a really distinctive clitellum on that worm. So not sure if that's a juvenile. Uh, red or it is a blue. Not sure. But yeah, the worms that are climbing, I don't see any distinctive cl clitellum on that one either. What I do is when I find a climber is when I, when I do, if they don't just flick off back into the bedding, I tend to put them in the middle of the bin they have to find their way out. Now that one looks more like a traditional red, chubbier, a little bit of a yellow tip there on the tail. Still not a clitellum visible, but it's kind of covered in castings as well. So into the middle you go. And see that cluster that was on the side, they are making their way back down. And so this one, just flick that one down and, oh, still on my finger. That one is... Again, no, is that a little yellow tip on the tail? Could be. All right, so there's one more here. Come on, there we go. So the worms that are all climbing, they do seem to be a bit thinner than, than the chubby type of red wigglers. Not all red wigglers are chubby. And then these guys over here, I'm just gonna flick those back down. The last little bit. And so there, are, oh, one more, one more climber over here. He was turning the corner to come around. So that's why he's in a U shape. He was doing a U turn to come back down. All right, so he can go in the middle. So what I'm going to do after I shut the video off is I'm just gonna wet these down. And uh, hopefully that banana will keep these worms going for a while. Worms gone bananas. Okay, bye everyone.